So we saw Kristen win a ton of events last year. This year, we've only seen her win one at Waco. One thing she does well, though, is when she is in the lead, she stays in the lead. It does seem like she really wants to win this one. You can tell she's excited when she's making her big putt. She's given a few more fist bumps. She is looking very consistent. She's looking confident on the putting green, and she's leading the field in fairway hit percentage. So I think as long as she keeps it in the middle of the fairway, we could see her take this one pretty easily. We've been kind of waiting for Holland's fireworks. She's always in the at least the top five. If she can just hold on to that kind of more relaxed mentality that we saw on the card today, I think we could see her come out with another double digit round. She has not won an elite series yet, and she is hungry for it. It will be interesting to see if Holland is able to reel in Kristen at all, but I think a podium finish is in her future for sure. So Evelina is always going to be throwing the disc better than anyone. That's largely due to her confidence on the tee. She had a good putting day on day one, but it seems like when the pressure's on, the cameras are on, Evelina struggles to make those putts. So it's interesting that Emily on the first day shot an even par and on the second day shot a six down, and that's enough to get into fourth place and onto the lead card on the final day. I think that really speaks for how the changes on the uh, this side of heaven course made it play much more difficult for the FPO field. She has a great kind of turnover and flexing game. She doesn't really have the sidearm, but doesn't really need it out here at Jonesboro. She shot six down yesterday and should be able to, I think, put together a nice round. It's kind of going to be a podium battle for second and third place, I think, for Evelina and Emily Beach both. Hello and welcome to the final round of the Play It Again Sports Jonesboro Open presented by Westside Discs, the fifth elite pro stop of the year here at the disc side of heaven i'm madison walker i'm erica cinchcomb we're the two hot keys Hawk. another windy day we're flapping around a lot out there just mm-hmm. not really making any forward progress mm-hmm. not like kristen tatar who is six strokes in the lead uh she went into yesterday six strokes ahead of a different competitor remained six strokes ahead of everybody uh let's check it out she had 86 has had 86 percent fairway hits landing in circle two in regulation 78 percent of the time and 71 percent circle 1x putting in second place right now holland handling 90 percent of the time finding herself in the fairway wow 89 percent of the time finding herself at cir- in circle two and putting making 87 percent of her circle 1x putt is putts God. yeah we saw her make so many putts yesterday it was unreal evelina salonen 76 percent fairway hits 50 percent c1x putting uh love to see her bump that up but landing in circle two 72 percent of the time hopefully she can deal with those nerves and that three-way tie four second wraps up with emily beach 81 percent fairway hits 61 circle two in regulation 80 percent circle one x putting very excited to watch a lefty attack this course especially one that can drop bombs like emily can Hole one, it's 520 feet. The new hole one this year, but the same hole that we played last year. Maybe the out of bounds is a little bit wider when you cross this marshy area. We watched Cat March park this hole along with only 15% of the MPO field, but most players, especially in the wind today, gonna lay up on the short side and throw their second shot into this beautiful little gap with the elevated basket on the log. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Championship Sunday at the 2024 Play It Again Sports Jonesboro Open, presented by Westside Disc. We're live on the team for the FPO lead card here at 955. Please welcome first to the team from Perno, Estonia, your 2022 Jonesboro Open champion, Kristen Tatar. As you can hear and see, this is the windiest windiest it has been in the beginning of the round. The previous two days, it was calmer and then picked up as the day went on. So some tough conditions out there today. Kristen just going to do the layup play. Next on the team, we welcome from Grapevine, Texas, Holland Hendley. Man, that wind is wild. Yeah. 
Holland shot a 10 down round yesterday. I believe it's 1026 rated. She had seven birdies in a row. She actually didn't get this one yesterday, which is one of the easier ones out there to get. It's funny because this was always one of the hardest holes on the course uh, <laughs> in the first years of um, playing this course. We said in round one, this is one of the longest standing courses on tour along with MVP and what was the third one? Oh. Definitely a third one. There's a Ledge third stone? one. Oh yeah, let's show. Um, this is the eighth year here. First year with a big change. And next on the tee from Oklahoma, please welcome Emily Beach. Definitely yeah. no stranger to playing in the wind. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, we haven't seen Emily yet this year. We've seen her in years prior. Big distance, lefty. <laughs> Very fun to watch. Lots of flexi lines. She sometimes even switches and throws with her opposite hand. She's yeah. very good at it. Kristen up first with just a few small trees to contend with over the out-of-bounds. What used to be a marsh. A nice correction from yesterday where she was a little too far right, getting tangled up. Now she is just outside the bullseye for birdie. Probably a slightly tougher line here for Emily. She just has to go straight at it or a turnover shot, which she does, but pulls it too much, gets caught in that corner. It's dense over there. Yeah, this might even be tough to save par. So the starter today was like, hey, it's getting warm. There's some snakes. We saw a copperhead, right? And then we're walking. My card was walking across this bridge here. And w someone jumped because they thought it was a snake. And then the rest of us jumped, and it was a frog, and it looked very funny. <laughs> Everyone jumping. Yeah. <laughs> the frog Freaking was like, out. my people. Yes, like we're mild screaming. <laughs> Evelina is going to get caught up in that corner, too. Hopefully there's no frogs in there to scare her. Do you think the frog felt like right at home because everyone was jumping? <laughs> I hope so. Everyone kind of tangoing in the corner. Except for Kristen. Nice little technical out from Emily. Holland's got a look at it. Framed up. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Evelina looks like she's inside the circle. Pretty awkward straddle, but she's good for it. What a pretty little floaty putt. Yeah, Evelina pretty far back of the lead here. She's, what, seven down, so 11 strokes back. Now eight down, but still 11 strokes back. Math, people. And Kristen going to immediately take another stroke on Holland, who has the only realistic chance of catching her. Lots of little twiggy trees on this hole one green. One of the coolest holes on the course. Birdied by 38% of the field. Nice. And was the easiest hole of the day. It is funny. You're right. It used to be so hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> just, we've just all gotten so good. Yeah, so good. Going to keep getting better, too. Maybe someone will get this one today. We have not seen a birdie on hole two yet. It's par three, 360 feet. Uphill the entire way. Kind of an awkward line with the hillside in the way. No out of bounds to speak of. Um, we have seen, what, maybe three people land in the circle so far. Um, it's difficult even to get to circle two. It's just so much elevation. Plus, the it was kind of like head-ish right to left wind. Um, so again, just, the, the wind changes a lot, so it, some of this is like just a guess. Just the worst wind for attacking this hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kristen Tatar, one of the best throwers in the game, not even a circle two, it looks like. Evelina was able to get a look at it, I believe. She throws all heavyweight discs, 
So that will really help her game in the wind. She carries a lot of distance today. I can't quite tell if she got inside the circle, but she will be Def putting. Definitely in circle two. Similar line from Holland, just a bit more turn than Evelina. Trying so hard not to complain about this hole for a third time. <laughs> Emily slides up into circle two as well. Only seven people got to circle two. No one able to get to circle one on this hole today. If you haven't seen Emily play before, she throws a little bit more flippy discs than some of the other ladies on the card. That was a wraith. She is more kind of that like hyzer flip and flex game versus forcing over overstable discs. Ooh, that looks like a saucy little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wind definitely carries that approach shot after the skip. Yeah, it kind of looked like she conceded and then just really quickly threw it. Maybe could have taken a, a bit more time, but... This um, green is interesting. You do get big skips on yeah. that dirt patch right there. Emily gave it a good bid wide left. It's really crazy putting on days like today. Nice. Yeah. All of a sudden you find every little teeny problem in your putt. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, That's... I expose this part of my disc a lot, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Evelina finding... Nothing but success so far. Two tester putts immediately to start. Um, good corrections from yesterday. And what do you know? A round of pars. Yep, 82% of the field parring that one. Any birdies? No birds. Mm. Ooh. Little foreground framework on that slow-mo. It's like Paige Pierce, the only one making really big moves so far, three down through seven. Hole three at 324 feet. This one is much more reachable, especially with the downhill nature of the hole. It doesn't quite look like that from a tee pad because of the huge goalie in between, but mostly you just got to get a, either a distant sidearm or a backhand turnover to this basket. Don't go too early because it can be pretty brutal in that uh, inside tree patch area, but they did clear it out a lot, so... Um, you will see most people recover at least a par. This is one like, look, there's the feather banners blowing on the low right, but not so much up at the green. Who knows what it was doing? Doesn't matter. Chris Tatar going to throw a perfect forehand. Let's see. That was an orbit rive. When I came through, it was kind of like, right to lefty, like it was holding the sidearms over, but it doesn't really look like that right now. Nice. Yeah, Evelina coming in with a really nice amount of control, checking up right pin high with the basket. They're just like, we're so good at forehands, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sucks for everyone else. <laughs> but Holland's like, wait, what about me? Oh, I want her to go over there and nod with them so badly. <laughs> yeah. Triple fist bump. Holland, going to be a little bit more obstructed on the putting green, but good shot. Emily able to just use a hyzer out into the space. Yeah, there's a few times today where just a simple left-handed hyzer is going to play really well. Um, just like the power sidearm for the right-handed player. Kristen, close to the edge of circle one, runs at it even mm. on this hill, and this is the game you play. Oh, no. You know, it wouldn't be Jonesboro if we didn't see at least one of these, and honestly, that could have been so much worse. We've seen those go all the way down to that little tiny gully before. Still a bad break. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
happens on these greens, especially with the elevated basket, pretty regularly out here at Jonesboro. Ah, uh, hauling with nothing. You can see she was bummed. Nothing. <laughs> She looks like relaxed Holland. She does. Party I, Holland's here. I feel like maybe like Hawaiian beach vibes Holland. Like Tiki Bar uh, Holland? Yeah, yeah. Island Holland. A really nice birdie putt from Emily Beach to get her first birdie of the round. Emelina making some moves here. Two down through three in yep. the wind. And three tester putts made. I'm going to card the bogey with that roll away. Still six strokes in the lead. Only six birdies on this one today. Emily and Evelina being two of the six. Nice work on our lead card on Championship Sunday. That's going to bridge the gap to only four or six strokes. Hole four, now par five. The tee pad is back maybe 40 or 50 feet in previous years. Makes it more of a straight pushing shot that then hyzers out at the end. It's harder to work the flex. Second shot, you want to get up and around this corner if you can. Um, we have seen an eagle here. Evelina got it yesterday with an, just two massive shots. Uh, and she had a tap in. Super cool. If you didn't watch it, go do it. But it's really difficult from the new pin position to get the eagle. Um, definitely going to be happy with birdie on this one. During practice, I don't. I wasn't too thrilled with the change, but it's scoring really well for the FPO field. I don't mind the change. As I said yesterday, this is the only problem: is you are completely in the fairway of a different hole, hole six. Yeah, it's so a little bit of a safety issue. The only reason I don't like it, but I don't mind the distance change. It's still gettable. Mm -hmm. um, just a slightly different line off the tee. Emily squeaks through those left side trees. That was perfect. She's going to be underneath that one tree you want to avoid, but she might be able to find a gap that moves continuously as the wind blows. <laughs> <laughs> Holland early, messing with that left side, but she gets through nicely. That's not a bad spot. Wow, that was bizarre. Um, Looks like the tree just like tossed it out. Yeah. Yeah. Got you, dog. Yeah. Kristen pulling it a little right, but no problems. These are some lead card flights if I've ever seen them. <laughs> <laughs> Colin eyeing up the top of the hill at the very least, but not crying, trying to get too aggressive here and wrap the corner. It's really a really easy birdie, even just from that spot right there without going too far left. Yeah, as long as you got the sidearm, which obviously Holland does. It's been interesting, though, to watch a lot of the field do the slightly longer approach. You you just can't get as close. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's been less birdies of, as people have adjusted to that last shot, which is a bit harder. Kristen way up here yeah. and able to wrap the corner with ease. Oh, man, is she, she's got to be close to circle two down there. Yeah. There she is. There she is. 32% of the field birding this hole. Evelina, maybe even farther than yesterday, but much more left. This needs a huge skip to give her a eagle look, but I think she'll have to settle for a birdie. Yeah, she's a little too pinched to wrap as far left as she needed. Holland with a little chip shot. Might be blind to the basket from there. Speed control is really important on the screen. And she's going to have some uh, obstructions over there.
I'm only swinging it way around this tree and going deep. This is something that I feel like we do see with Emily a lot of times. She she kind of throws the disc hard always. She, yeah, doesn't meter the approach shots. Uh-huh. So she does really well when you're having to drive the green. Uh, well, when it comes to approaches, sometimes we see her come in hot, which we love. But big <laughs> comeback putts are necessary. Yeah. Kristen just able to jump putt her third. Oh, man. Not a whole lot back there for Emily. Except for poison ivy. <laughs> yeah. Hope she's got to go wash her ankles later. And ticks. Man, Holland. Super deep lunge. Just finding really tough putting situations. Evelina about 25 feet for birdie. Catches some left side chains. Emily, a little more work left to do for her par. And she's good for it. 32% of the field birdieing this whole 15 out of our 40 competitors. Man, there's only 40 by the end? Is, is am that, I wrong? No, are you, I mean, I there was only like 40... Uh, six, Sorry, 48 to start? 48. It's 47 now. Okay. I knew this. this was, that math wasn't math and all day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> Honk. Yeah. Kristen, the only one on our lead card able to get the birdie. And extending her lead by yet another stroke. Yeah, Holland only pars. Needs to get the strokes to catch Kristen and <laughs> it feels silly to say running out of time on hole four but seven strokes is a lot it sure is hole five is not an easy birdie to get for anybody 360 feet with a very late right turn if you have the distance sidearm that is the way to get there and we did see some people birdie it yesterday um I'm not sure 100% sure what the wind was doing on this hole, but I think that's a really big decision maker and what yeah. type of shot and how aggressive you're going to get because a lot of FPO competitors turn this into a two shot hole. It, it felt like a headwind down the tunnel when I came through. You can kind of see in like the background kind of left to right. -ish. Oh yeah. 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 I feel like that's typically what it is on the yeah. windy days. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's so good. No kidding. That is a perfect oh backhand. Oh my! Yes, please. What was she? The she switched from a Saint Pro to a Grace today because of the wind, and that was a good change. Man, that's one of the best drives we've seen on this hole, L like ever, ever. Yeah, particularly with a backhand. Mm -hmm. Evelina following it up with her own beauty of a shot. Yeah, nice to catch that tree as a backboard, though. She's going to be a bit deep, I think, as is she's just outside the circle. Mm -hmm. One of the holes where the left hand backhand, probably a better play than the right hand backhand, anyhow. <laughs> Generally speaking. Coming in hot, get some big ground play. Sh Emily will be in circle two, coming back uphill at the basket. We saw Holland get this one yesterday with a forehand, right? Mm -hmm. She went power forehand. Interesting to see her go backhand today. Yeah. Leaves it a little bit short, but easy par. She puts a lot of torque on a forehand. Maybe she was worried about the wind. We can only speculate. Should we speculate wildly? Yeah. <laughs> Emily, not much to work with down there. Just has to pitch up. Even if she did, this is a challenging wind for putting. Same kind of miss we just saw in the last hole as well as yesterday. Just kind of chain high but left side. And Evelina gets a pretty mean roll back to circle's edge now going uphill. Looks like a right to left crosswind. One thing that is good to see for someone that is 
uh, struggling on the putting green a little bit is to see them still running putts like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's inside the circle. It is one that she knows she can make, and she ran at it confidently. It's unfortunate to, unfortunate to see this for Jogi happening, but it's good to see her putting it into practice and um, watch Evelina continue to run those kind of scary putts. Holland sails the par putt long, but that was, I think, an even longer make coming back. So good recovery, especially with the risk of going back downhill. Kristen with a highlight birdie. Yep, one of only two on the day, the other by Eliezer Middling. Nine strokes now. Nine. And just stacking them, just stacking them up. What is it about Jonesboro that just allows people to pull away so far ahead. Do you know? I don't no, know. <laughs> I, I, I was literally trying to think. <laughs> There's got to be something. Maybe it's who can handle pollen the best. <laughs> oh my God, you would make a pollen joke. I was literally... Okay. Is that where you were Yeah, I was, yes. <laughs> oh man. Hole six is another par four, 560 feet. You need to get out and around this corner. You can just push straight um, but you do want to try to wrap the corner and finish to the left here to shorten the hole. Second shot sets up really nicely for a right-handed sidearm. That's kind of like a stall hyzer shot around this final corner. Backhand does work. Um, I'm not really sure what this tee shot's going to look like for Emily here. If she's trying to do a turnover, it's going to be interesting to see her choice here um, to get in the prime position. Obviously, too, this tee pad's so weird, slightly pointed up right at a hill. Kristen yesterday just barely cleared the hillside, and I think that's just like this, the way to do it so you're not exposing that nose up angle. That was a really good rip on this hole, putting her in a great position to attack for birdie with the forehand. It's kind of a funky hole for a left handed player. Just the tee shot, the second shot's not bad. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's this is what it seems like would happen every time. You just fade way over there. There's no. I guess that must be OB actually. No, it's safe. Uh, th no, there's no, OB, I mean, yeah, there's way, OB over there. way over there. Yeah. That right handed players have never thought about. <laughs> yes. But now, too, her second shot is really far. It's very long. Good thing she's good at that. Mm hmm. Huge rip from Evelina. She's just a bit farther than Kristen in prime position. Can't feel a bit of wind down at the tee pad, but it is definitely happening. The old invisible force. Look at it go right now. Yeah, Holland's just really turning. Um, <gasps> Ooh, no, that is in out of bounds. No. I think she's maybe safe. So maybe the right side is not out of bounds on this hole. I think this, she, it's right before the stakes start, yep. maybe. Yep. Wild. What a, yeah, what a nice place to find. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I suppose so. That was probably weird for a second. <laughs> Emily trying to punch this thing down there. Puts a lot of power on it and gets to the edge of circle two. I believe that there was like a provisional situation that happened and those stakes weren't accounted for in the caddy book, my editor very kindly tells me. So so it did look out of bounds, but it was not. Yeah. They just forgot to put it in the caddy book, maybe. Mm -hmm. Evelina, with the sidearm, pushes a little bit deep. Yeah, they were probably spending all of their time cleaning up the rough and mowing because, wow, this oh, place no, yeah, looked they, incredible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no shade. Like, no, <laughs> literally none. Uh, Holland, way in that rough. Really good out, though. You'll know if we're complaining in the booth. <laughs> they, they know. They hear it a lot. Holland going to have to settle for another bogey. And at this point, where's Evelina at? I feel like it's more of a podium battle. Mm -hmm. Kristen can just go on cruise control. I don't know if she has that setting or like <laughs> understands what that is, but she, she could. Oh, she knows it. 
Does she? I feel like she's just going to no, keep we'll, getting birdies. That's true. We'll probably watch her do another double dig Yeah, she'll today. probably just like shoot the hot round just because. <laughs> I mean, she had last hole she was one of only two birdies on the day. Now today. she's going to turkey it. The, and she was also one of only two birdies on this hole as well. So she is getting the ones that everyone else is having a hard time with. Allie Smith getting the other one nice. on this one. Yeah, Kristen Tatar, no cruise control, only Pedal like to the metal. overdrive, like nitrous level <laughs> <laughs> boosting. There's like two spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> just stacked. <laughs> Kristen, three down. See, why not have the hot round when you're already leading by 11? A prince of Southern royalty was born for plastic stone. There's nothing more that you can do. Pole seven at 535 feet. You have to make a decision here on the windy days, whether you want to lay up or go over. We've been watching the lead card go over, usually all four competitors getting to this area right here. We've watched Evelina though, go all the way up here yesterday. Holland also almost able to see the basket of this typically blind shot over the hill. The basket's perched on a very steep slope. Sometimes rollaways can find yourself hundreds of feet down the hill. So be careful as you enter the green. Kristen going grace today. She went rive yesterday. Looks like a really good shot here. This was largely a left to right wind. When I came through, the flags do seem to match that, which is not a bad wind for this hole by any means. Emily likely just wanting to swing it wide enough where she's not dealing with that final tree on the approach. What a pretty shot. Absolutely dead straight the entire flight. Yeah, that star wraith again. Evelina bumping up from just a regular old destroyer to a halo star destroyer in the wind. Great shot. Probably not quite as far as yesterday, but still smoked. Oh yeah. Wow. All in with an ESP nuke. Really good. Every time she throws those uh, dive discs, it just looks so cool. Yeah, it does. Throw Joe's. That's the die. Mm hmm. Kristen chipping the harp up and over the hill. <gasps> Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I wish I knew more car analogies. I got nothing. <laughs> Let's see it again. She might be hitting jumps, honestly. <laughs> Things you don't do with sports cars. Yeah, she like caught some air for sure. Did a barrel roll maybe. That basket was extremely friendly as well. Yeah, that's crazy. Why not just, just get four in a row? Mm -hmm. Why not? Whoa, Evelina clears the hill by about <laughs> one and a half inches. <laughs> Enough spin, though, to worm burn her way to the bullseye. She, like, maybe just grazed one worm, you know? Mm -hmm. She only hit the grass for a second. Emily putting a little bit too much air under hers, and she's going to be circle's edge coming back at it. Look how far Holland is. She's playing a different game. This is strange. A little oops that kind of works out, but does get a little roll action on the hill. It's almost too close. Emily, outside the circle, just going to lay up for a par. Trying to avoid the roll away. This is one of those hills that actually looks about as steep as it is on camera. Mm -hmm. like, just look at it. And once it happens to you once, you have to visit the bottom of the hill, you... Remember. <laughs> yeah, you relive it. Holland once again airing it over the top of the basket. Thankfully, it sits down. Evelina for birdie and to move to two down. Mm 
And Evelina now only one stroke behind Holland, who is yet to find a birdie this round. Kristen with an absolute tap in birdie. And now a ruby crowned kinglet. Yep. Four Again, birdies in a row. One of only six birdies on the day on that hole. She's just getting the hard ones. She's just getting everything. She's getting it. She is getting it. Four down through seven. This was like sustained 15 to 20 mile an hour wins, guys. Like, it, it's hard. Hole eight, an uphill par three. Shortest hole at 255. Uh, you want to just throw kind of a hyzer up the hill. Going over the little bushes that we just passed is a good play or swinging maybe just to the right of them. Uh, you want to make sure you don't pick up and roll into the hillside. There can be some challenging putting if you don't get it all the way there. It was like pretty head windy here. Only 10 people got this birdie today. That's the lowest percentage we've seen on the hole yet. It was just a tough wind to get all the way there. You saw a lot of this, the wind keeping it straight, dealing with this right side. Evelina threw a rock three yesterday. She stables up to a firebird, but still doesn't quite have enough fade to get all the way there. She's putting for birdie though. Pretty awkward lefty turnover shot here. Pretty good though. It's a Halo Star Mako three. Emily gonna be in the edge of the woods as well. Holland sawing it off a little bit more. Not quite. Oh, she gets the circle one. Yeah. Nice touchy forehand shot from Emily. Kristen doesn't look like she has much here. Let's see if she gives it any kind of a look. Look at those flags up there. Just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> She is running it. A little soft bid, never hurt nobody. <laughs> it's definitely hurt a lot of people, but <laughs> Especially I on this hole. did like how you said it. <laughs> Evelina with a nice bid hits cage, but sits all in for her first birdie of the round inside the circle putt, leaves it short. She still looks so relaxed, easy breezy. Yeah, just having fun with it. I mean, that's the key. A round of pars is a kind of to be expected on this hole today. Like Erica said, the wind was not ideal, but there were 10 birdies. This is one of the ones that you just can't get a bogey on. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we got? One more one hole. hole. One yep. hole left and a 12 stroke differential. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot to talk about here. Yeah. I hope you guys keep watching. <laughs> hole nine, a new hole. This used to be hole 17. It was a par four. Now a one shot hole with the added bonus of the out of bounds hazard on the left side. A backhand turnover can get there, but a forehand I think is the safest way to attack this one. If you come in early, it can be a little tricky on the putting green, or if you come in hot and get a big skip deep at the basket is also fairly difficult to recover from. It was a tailwind, so it looks like the winds actually stayed consistent today, which is nice. But anyway, the backhand turnover for the right-handed player didn't work so well in the tailwind, so it was a lot of sidearms today. Uh, wow. Kristen, with what looked like a perfect shot, catches the stake, which leaves her short. Still a great shot, but I think she was going to be inside the circle. Evelina with a destroyer here. Looks like a solid line, and oh, she's wow. yeah, about 18, 15 feet away. Almost a carbon copy of yesterday's yeah. shot. Gorgeous. This hole sets up well for Emily's backhand. She pushes it too straight though, and she's gonna be in the hazard. 
she will have to putt from in the hazard with a an extra stroke. And that looks like she landed in a pretty tricky area too. Yeah. Holland pretty low on this sidearm, but it uh, doesn't quite work. Just gets a bunch of straight skips. Yeah, Emily just with kind of a awkward little layup. Holland with a look at it. She's got to be running it. Yeah. Sails it long. Hopefully she's not too much in those little trees back there. And Holland's still just unable to find any green for the scorecard. Hmm. All right. Is that... That was a layup. Cruise control? That was a layup. Is that what that is? Or is she just like downshifting for like one <laughs> second? Her calf's tired. <laughs> <laughs> From crushing the gas pedal to the floor. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh man, Holland. Yeah. You're going to find a double bogey on this one. Yeah, that hurts. And Evelina with the birdie two-stroke swing there. That is not something I was anticipating. Evelina not only able to catch Holland, but overtake her in the front nine. And the most birdies on this hold uh, this weekend with that lovely tailwind here, everyone felt comfortable attacking this whole nine. And that will wrap up the front nine of Championship Sunday, we do have nine more holes at the Dis side of heaven. Right now, like we've been saying all along, Kristen, the only player in the 20s right now. And she's doing it by 10 strokes minimum. Yeah. <laughs> Hot 12, round as well. 12 strokes. Pretty crazy. There are a handful of people, as we can see, under par. Rebecca Cox, Jennifer Allen, Maria Oliva, Eliezer Middling, Owen Scoggins, all under par, all jumping two to nine spots. It's almost like a bonus moving day in this wind. It sure is. Uh, not nearly as many people under par as yesterday. A lot more difficult conditions. Um, but we do have nine more holes to watch, and we have a really tight race for second place right now. So come hang with us um, as we watch Holland and Evelina battle it out for the number two position. Thanks again to the Founders Club. Come hang with us on the back nine. I'm Madison Walker. I'm Erica Sinchcomb. We're the two hot geese. Honk. Honk.